So we give our notions substance. In the last video we looked at wealth, nation, body. These are all clearly notions, as is the whole notion of a world out there. The existence of a world independent of you or the mind is but the jugglery of the mind. It is nothing but the recognition of a notion, as if it were a substance. And this is how we regard our beliefs. I don't just mean religious beliefs or metaphysical beliefs, but our everyday beliefs, what you might even call scientific beliefs, about the nature of the world. I remarked that I was born of the mind of the Creator. Vasishta was supposed to have been born directly from Brahma the Creator. Even so, the world arises in the mind as a notion. The creatures our own mind. Everything arises in our mind as notions. In fact, even the creator is but a notion in the cosmic mind. The cosmic mind is also a notion. The world appearance too is a notion in the mind. These notions gain strength in the mind by being invested repeatedly with the mantle of truth and therefore they arise again and again, creating the illusory world appearance with them. They're infested repeatedly with the mantle of truth, not only by ourselves, but, by, but also by the society in which we live. We all agree that this is a nation's boundaries, up to a point anyway, and we agree that a certain piece of paper has a certain monetary value. If a man resolutely seeks the source of the notions, he realises consciousness. When I was exploring the notion of a body in the last video, we could see that it was actually quite a subtle thing we were trying to pin down. The body is the main part of something. It's somehow what gives something its importance. It's what justifies the context. And it's quite good if we can get in touch with that feeling of what it is we're trying to pin down by playing with the notion of a body. And I think if, if we do that, well, when we do that, then we're getting to the basic consciousness which is driving that feeling, that feeling that we're trying to pin down something essential, the essence of something, the main part of something. That's what we're trying to pin down by the notion of a body. What is the essence of this object that we've identified as an object? What is the main part that we're trying to communicate? This is what consciousness is doing. And the main part of what we're trying to communicate is consciousness. So if we really, really look into this, really look into the source of the notions, even the notion of a body, we can get close or even realise consciousness. Otherwise, he experiences the illusory world appearance again and again. If you don't want to think about it, a body is just a body. It's got two arms, two legs torso and a head, that's it, end of story. Okay, some bodies might have amputations or whatever. They might be joined bodies, but they're still a body. We all know what a body is, that's it. Well, that's the kind of thinking or not wanting to think which keeps you caught up in the illusory world appearance again and again. For by continually entertaining notions such as this is it, this is what it is, or this is mine, and this is my world. Such notions assume the appearance of substantiality. The permanency of the world is also an illusion. In the dream state, what is really a brief moment is experienced by the dreamer as a lifetime. In a mirage, only the illusory water is seen and not the substratum. So the substratum of a mirage is usually heat, heat waves. We're not looking at that, we're trying to focus on the mirage, on the apparent water. Even so, in a state of ignorance, 
one sees only the illusory world appearance, but not the substratum, which is awareness. However, when one has shed that ignorance, the illusory appearance vanishes. No, the appearance might not necessarily vanish, but the tendency to get caught up in it vanishes because we know it's an illusion. Even the man who is normally subject to fear is not afraid of an imaginary tiger. The wise man who knows that this world is not but a notion or imagination is unafraid of anything. When one knows that the world is nothing but the appearance of one's self, of whom need he be afraid? When one's vision is purified by inquiry, one's deluded understanding concerning the world vanishes. If you identify with the notion of a body, if awareness is identifying with the notion of a body, then there will be fear, because that body is perishable. But if awareness is identifying with itself, then that fear will diminish. In fact, it will disappear completely. It is by clear perception and understanding that one's nature is purified, and then it does not become impure again. It's purified to the extent to which it can remain in this awareness with not getting, without getting caught up in your psychological and latent tendencies. And the more you're established in this awareness, the more the latent tendencies become weaker. What is that right understanding? It is to realise that this world is nothing but the reflection and therefore appearance of pure consciousness, and thus it is neither real nor unreal. Birth, death, heaven, knowledge and ignorance are all reflections of consciousness. They're all notions. I, you, the ten directions and all this are consciousness. Such is right understanding. When there is right understanding, the mind does not arise nor does it set, but it attains supreme peace. It does not indulge in praise and censure, in exaltation and depression, but it is ever cool and rests in truth. <laughs>